Hi, Ivan Cabano, it's Chris here, and it's Sunday here on Maputin Cooking. So today I'm gonna to tell you a little bit more about the journey as Urbano Maputin Cooking here in the Philippines, as sort of an aspiring chef entrepreneur, and also to take some of your questions and comments that you leave on the show, because I do read everything that you guys put in the comments field. So this was quite an interesting week. So on the cooking side, I made my own granola. And how do I make Philippine granola? We mix a lot of like more authentic Philippine ingredients. So I like to use things like, you gotta have rolled oats in there, Obviously, but I like to put in cashews and then like papitas, you know, your mga pumpkin seeds. And then I'll bake my granola using coconut oil. We put desiccated coconut in also as like one of the palaman. And then I use local honey and you mix that all up, you toast it. And then I chop through dried mango. And it's like my Chris Urbano's Philippine granola recipe because, you know, grabbing yung mahal dito sa Manila. I think Philippines is pre-hipster still. I don't know if we're at the hipster stage of economic development, but I'm just starting to see like granola is becoming a thing. And and you go to all these stores and you know it's like 500 pesos for a little pack and i'm like come on i mean this is really easy to make at home like super mahalion so i'll show you guys a video on how to make it and you can then save some money the other thing that was really cool this week i was invited to the australian beef culinary trail basically they like asked media people and somehow i got on their list but maybe because i'm also an aussie and i know a little bit about the beef they asked me to come along and basically we tried like a bunch of different restaurants here in makati city who serve australian grass-fed beef and I think if you guys have seen my Salpicao video, I talk about why I like using Australian beef. Like it's obviously a great beef producing country, you know, pastoral country. And I usually prefer grass fed because it's, you know, not fatty and it just is healthier. It tastes better. You got to be a bit more careful how you cook it so it remains tender, but it's super set up. So I went on this thing and I met Chef Jesse at top of the city. I went to People's Palace in Greenbelt 3, who apparently also is serving Australian grass fed beef. And then I went to Smith Butcher in De La Costa Street on Oh my God, this was amazing. Like steaks were just massive and delicious. And they actually carry some of the wine that I bring in. So I kind of like that restaurant as well because they're one of my good wine customers. And if you want good food and wine, you should definitely check that out. I've got a bit of footage from that. We'll just play that now. Hi, Mark Cabana. It's Chris here uh, from Apopi Cooking. And today I'm at the uh, Australian grass fed beef on the menu. So, Dito Kona is famous at Makati City, Chef Jesse, Top of the City restaurant. This is what we're eating today. Sorry. Sorry to make you all jealous. <laughs> Um, you know, food that was one of the real cool highlights of my week and one of the perks I guess of doing this show is occasionally I get a chance to go and sample new products that are coming into the Philippines and then tell you guys about them. So consider yourself told and if you are looking out for beef, I obviously do as an Australian do recommend looking for Aussie grass fed and putting that on your menu at home or going to restaurants that serve it because it's pretty set up. And now let's get into some of your questions and comments that you've left me in the last little while. So so my first one today comes from Ricky Rogue, who left this comment on the top five seafood dishes video that I released a week or two back. He says, I went to Cebu one time for the Sinulog Fiesta, and there was the Kinilao in coconut and lechon side by side. Lo and behold, I went back for Kinilao more than I went back for lechon. That is amazing. <laughs> I would include Sinigang na Salmon or Maya Maya Samiso in my top 10 list. Question, would you agree that a deep fried tuna tail tastes like pork fat? Okay, so there's a few things in there. So one, Sinulog Fiesta, awesome. Two, deep fried tuna tail, does it taste like pork fat? Well, yeah, like tuna is probably the most meaty fish out there and big steaks of tuna, if you cook it a certain way, it can almost taste like pork. And I've definitely had things like tuna sisig or tuna cooked in adobo and it works, definitely works. So out of any seafood, I think it's the closest one to cooking like pork. I can see how you'd get that flavor combination. Great comment. Thank you very much for writing in, keep in touch. Okay, the next comes from JM Day Channel Vlog who writes, Hello sir, kumusta? Kumusta kakabayan? Aha, I'm a beginner in YouTubing, vlogging. Bigyan mo naman ako ng mga tips para dumami ang subscribers ko at viewers. Salamat. Salamat, kabayan. So, JMD, firstly, I don't know if I'm the right guy to be asking. I mean, you know, sobrang konti po mga subscriber, di ba? I've been doing this for like two, three years. I think we're up to about 25,000 subscribers. Our Facebook does have about 25,000 as well. So I guess, you know, we have been able to build a bit of an audience. I guess the challenge in YouTube is anybody can do it. So I think the secret is you've got to really find something that's truly authentic. There's a saying in content creation in the internet, which is inch wide, mile deep. 
you want to cover a topic in so much detail or it's so niche that you are the only person in the world who's covering that particular thing. Because if you're just basically making videos about how you woke up and went to work that day or even when it comes to cooking videos, like talagang na, it's really hard for me to get views on my cooking videos. Like I think I'm making the best Filipino cooking show on the internet right now, but there's just so many videos with almost the same name, how to cook how to make, how to do this. It's just that you're competing with so many people. And I'll give an example. If you guys know Mikey Bustos, right? Like he's a great guy. We worked on some stuff together in the past and I really love his content. But what a lot of people don't know about Mikey is he's got two channels. He's got Mikey Bustos, Pinoy boy, Filipino, right? Then he has a channel called Ants Canada. Check it out. Honestly, Mikey, if you're watching, Ants Canada is totally cool. And Ants Canada has more subscribers than Mikey Bustos, who's actually like a really big vlogger and comedy guy here in the Philippines who does live shows and tours and fan fests and stuff as Mikey Bustos. Ants Canada is the biggest channel. What is it about? It's about ants. And that has more followers globally because it's so niche. Like who thinks to make a YouTube channel about ads? So that's really a great example of how to be super authentic. And what I found is it's actually the videos that I make where it's a bit more like Urbano's personality that's shining through that actually become more popular in the Philippines. It's just more important to be original and authentic. So ito yung tips ko para sa pare. Okay, so the next question today comes from Joe Alguiere, who writes, Seriously, I am having thoughts of you being reincarnated as a Filipino in a previous life. Creepy. Hey, can I purchase your book online and have it delivered in Houston, Texas? So firstly, shout out to Atimanga Cabano. So Houston, Texas. Thanks for watching. Joe, hey, thanks so much for the comment. I, I know you comment a lot on my show. I really appreciate you keeping in touch with me. Thanks for the support. But yung itong comment na about my book, huh? so thanks for bringing it up. We are producing a Filipino cookbook. It's going to be about 70 or 80 recipes. A lot of them are classic, showing you authentic ways to cook Filipino food from scratch, simple methods at home. But I'm also doing a lot of my Chris Urbano originals in there. Dishes like my kalumpit longanisa and black bean rigatoni, tuna mango and ampalaya or bitter gourd salsa, my fresh fruit halo halo, which is almost like Indonesian meets Filipino halo halo. So there's a lot of interesting recipes that are going to be included as part of that book. Now that should come out in quarter one next year. And if you, Joe, or if anybody else watching is interested to get a copy, could you just send me an email to chris at mapotingcooking.com? Obviously, we're going to do a shout out on the show, like when it's being released. But if you send me an email, we're going to write specifically to anyone who said I want to get a advanced copy and I'm actually gonna need your help because apparently when we release it it's really helpful if people go to like Amazon in the US and pre-order it or say that they're interested in a book even before it releases that's gonna be a big help to me so if you can drop me an email then you know I want to communicate with you guys directly when it's coming out so thanks for the comment Joe. I really appreciate it and look forward to getting the Maputin cooking book into your hands real soon thanks okay so the next question from Owen Ang Siko Reyes on my menudo video he goes lahat ng wine um so <laughs> <laughs> you can, <laughs> but you probably shouldn't. Like a standard recipe, good for four to six people. Usually one cup, cup and a half of wine is fine. When you are using wine in cooking, usually the best thing you can do is use the same wine that you're gonna then pair with the food. So often you open the bottle, you pour about a cup into the dish that you're cooking that day, and then you can pour yourself a glass while you're cooking, and then you finish the bottle with the meal as you eat it. I often use some cooking wine, either cheaper wine or wine that's been out for a few days and you wouldn't really drink it anymore. I often would use that for cooking as well because it masulit yun, diba? It's obviously nicer to use a freshly opened bottle, but usually in cooking, if the wine's been open for a few days, that's fine to use in cooking as well. Okay, thanks for the question. And the next question comes from Ramon Monares, who asks, what is kale in Tagalog? So I presume it's about my kale salad recipe. The answer to that is it's known as kina, dito sa Pilipinas. K-I-N-A, kina. So if you're up in, and it grows very well in Tagaytay, so there's actually up there one or two farms where I buy kale, fresh. And what I like about kale is it sort of grows and the stems get thicker and you can actually just like cut the leaves, like one set of leaves and then let it keep growing. And you can like harvest it every two weeks for about a 12 week picking period. So it's actually very very hardy, prefers the slightly cooler climate in Tagaytay, but I have actually had decent results growing kale here on my rooftop in Manila. So you can grow that quite easily and it's very nutritious. And if you haven't tried that kale salad recipe, it's really to die for. My last shout out is to it Stads B who says, you must try the lechon here in Cebu. Hope you have more collabs with Bogart because you guys were both funny. Please consider. Well, ask Bogart. Bogart and I were a natural comedy tandem. He is like a Filipino pretending to be an Australian. I am an Australian pretending to be a Filipino. So that's pretty funny. I mean, I think what scares me about working with Bogart is I think he's better than me. 
I think he's actually better at being an Australian than I am at being a Filipino. So I always feel like out, out of my league when I'm with Bogart. I'm like, damn, it's like he's actually more Aussie than me like considerably more Aussie. Like I can't even do that accent that he does, you know? So that, that's, that's, that's my anxiety when working with him. I'm just like, he's so good. But I'm good friends with Bogart. He's been traveling a lot. He's a busy guy. You know, he's chasing all those amazing creatures around the Philippines. And, but every now and then we get together and note that I'll have my people talk to his people and we'll see if we can do some sort of collaboration soon. Cause yeah, it is pretty funny working together. Uh, so look out for that. So that's it for this Sunday Mokobano. You guys can check out the Facebook page. We've got a lot more giveaways coming out this year. So if you haven't already tried to win some free stuff, keep trying to win free stuff. It's gonna be like every three weeks or so we're doing a giveaway. It's with MassFlex products, which I use at home. Really nice cookware, knives or utensils or fry pans, chopping boards, that kind of thing being given away. So don't miss that. And if, if you like the show, leave your comments below. We're gonna be talking to you guys direct every Sunday, taking your questions and comments here in Maputin Cooking. And thanks for everybody who wrote in in the last week or two with today's questions and comments. Really appreciate the support, guys. I'm Chris Urbana. I'll see you next time. Bye now.